what you might say is this contraption. Well, let's go over it a little bit and we'll discuss it. We've got a fuel tank on a board. We've got some bolts and it's attached to a base. Now the apple box is I just used to raise it up so it's higher to, for ease of looking and uh, for filming. But what is this? What could it be? Well I've been working on a video to repair a wood chipper and it came to a problem with the carburetor. And that is the carburetor bowl nut was leaking and I tried different things but it just kept leaking and leaking. So I've been wanting to uh, build one of these uh, to do a little bit more investigation. Now normally carbs are so cheap that uh, you just go to Amazon buy a new one. But this was the original uh, carb that uh, went with the machine and what if there wasn't an Amazon? I wanted to figure out how to fix it because it was just a little leak. Uh, it wasn't damaged that much. So that's the birth of this contraption. So basically what this stand is, is just a carb tester. You, this is the carb off of the uh, wood chipper. Here, here's the leakage that we're going to be looking at. And then we got the air filter on here. We might end up taking this off just so we can have a better view. But basically what it is, is on the bolts, they're quarter 20 bolts that I drilled through the back. We're going to add a nut right here just to hold it on so it's not flopping around. And you see right back here, I put two two nuts back here for locking nuts just to stop it because we don't want to push it all the way back. And then here's our one nut that we've been using to lock the carb onto. So we'll just tighten that up just a little bit. Just so it doesn't wobble around. So here's the fuel inlet. We'll attach that to the carb. And I'm using clear vinyl tubing. Normally I wouldn't use this for um, fuel purposes, but I want to be able to see the fuel flow uh, as it's coming down to make sure that's not the issue of uh, lack of fuel. And then, of course, we've got the fuel shut off. I did leave a little bit of space underneath here for dripping so I can put a container to catch anything because that's our issue right now, what we're trying to solve. So let's go ahead and get the air filter off so it's out of our way. We can see a little bit better. Yeah, we're going to need a new one of those. So I do see after taking that air filter off, I see a little bit of rust right in there. So water is getting in somehow right there. And that might explain why um, this fuel, I think, is going to look a little bad. So there's a, we got a little bit of a rust leak there. I mean, a uh, water leak. We'll t look into that, but that's not the issue. The issue is down below. So let's go ahead and turn on the fuel. See, it's flowing down. We're going to fill up the bowl. Give it a little bit of a tap just to make sure the needle is not stuck. And let's watch and see. See, it's already happening there. So coming from down below, let's see if we can get a good look at it. You can see we're leaking somewhere, I mean, major. So that's kind of what the issue is. And I want to kind of investigate to see what's causing it and the different things we tried and why it's not working. We've tried, it's got a new gasket on there. I used some uh, type of sealer, gasket sealer, and it looks like the gas fuel ate it away because I don't see it anymore on there. And um, so I'm not really sure. I thought it was the aluminum bowl had a cut or was dented enough that it was the gasket wasn't enough to seal it but I'm not really sure so that's what why I made this so we can investigate so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and shut off the fuel we don't need that anymore we know it's leaking so I can see that it's coming around the bowl nut it's definitely the bowl nut that is leaking around in that area. So there's not a hole or anything. In the um in the uh in the bowl. And it's not leaking up top cuz that has a new gasket around the top of it. So it's not there. So it's definitely around that bowl nut.
All right, we'll drain, let that drain out. So we can look inside here. It's got a little bit of water, but that could just be the fuel that's in there. You can see the bubble at the bottom. So this is the product we used, gasket dressing and sealant, and it says fuel resistant, but I don't even see any of that left. I put some on top of the gasket and below the gasket. It completely is, is gone. Oh, and, and even my gaskets tore up. Look at that, even. Why is my gasket all tore up? That doesn't make any sense. So that could be part of the issue. So I don't know what's going on, but there's no sealant left. So this product says it's fuel resistant, but it got eaten away and it's completely disappeared. It's not even on here anymore because it was blue color. It's probably what's holding on this little bit of gasket that's left. But that's it. Why just this area? All right, so we're back to the square one. So let's let's investigate some of the other parts too on it. So you can see right here how my gasket's all tore up. I've never seen one tear up that way. This is a brand new gasket. That's weird. Now I do see. Now I don't know if this is gonna pick up. Now I do see right there, there's a nick in the aluminum. I don't know if there's a crack or not. But it's definitely a, a nick. I wonder if it, and that, that could have cut the gasket. I mean, it's very small. And see, there, since this is aluminum, it, I don't think there's a very flat surface on this thing. I wonder if we used RTV. Is RTV fuel resistant? I know it's oil resistant. It's gotta be leaking right here. So this is the other side of it. Let's put a, a socket to it. Maybe see how flat it is. Putting a socket up to it, I can see little deviations in the aluminum. But that's what the gasket's supposed to take care of. So why isn't it not taking care of it? Maybe if we hammer it a little bit just to get it flatter. And then we put a new gasket on it. Maybe a little bit of thicker gasket. We'll see how that works. Let's try that. So what I think we're going to try is, uh, this is a homemade gasket, I think that's like eighth inch. It's, it's twice as thick as what the original gasket was. We're going to try that um, and see if that helps any, if that takes up any of the deviation. This is a more of a cellulose uh, rubber gasket. Maybe it will uh, fill in some of the voids more. I haven't looked up to see if the RTV yet will uh, would be a good alternative to fill up some of those gaps with gasoline. We'll get that fitted there. We need to come up with a good name for this. Maybe a Carbomatic 5000. We got to make a logo for it. That's, that's always fun trying to think of the cool logos for things. So you got to make sure that the bottom of the bowl is uh, is has a different levels on it to make sure that the farther level, the lower level is uh, where the float is going to hit or not hit, but it's going to float around. So let's see how tight do we want to get it. Not too tight. There you go. Yeah, that's crushed pretty good. I don't know. Let's see how if that works or not. 
Let's get you set back up a little farther away and take a look. All right, so we're gonna turn this on here. We'll let the bowl fuel, fuel, fill up. Let's we'll see if we'll get any leaking. Oh, I think our needle is. Do you see it coming out the top here? Because our needle was stuck and it wasn't uh, sitting properly. So I just tapped it and it, it, it vibrated the needle. So now it, that fixed that issue. Let's wipe it off. We've still got a little bit of a drip. Let's see if I need to tighten it or if I've over tightened it. Maybe with the cellulose gasket, I tightened it too much. Yeah, I'm still getting a drip. Tighten it a little bit more, let's see. Yeah, we're still dripping. So you can see the issue is dripping there in the back. I mean, it's coming from the pole, but it's, it's going to, I guess the gravity is pulling it that direction. So that's the issue that we're coming across. A different gasket didn't didn't work. Let me do a little bit of research. See if there's something else we can try. All right, so I took a break, had lunch. I think we're gonna retry the gasket sealant, but instead of using the fiber gasket, I'm gonna use some. This is a little bit thicker, the cellulose one, the same one as we used before. I think I was cranking down on it a little too much because it's so thick. Um, but we're also gonna use the gasket dressing and this. If this doesn't work. Then we'll try, uh, I need to go get another product. But what we're going to do is I got these punches. The inner diameter of the um, gasket is 9 16 and the outer is 9, I'm sorry, the inner diameter is 5 16 and the outer diameter is 9 16 So we'll start with the inner one first. Okay. And then we'll do the outer one. There you go. I love this punch set. I've used it a lot. Leather working and also gasket making. I'm a little off, but I think we'll make, we'll make another one. But that's basically the process. I didn't cut the center all the way through. It's a little off center, but that's basically it. So let me do a few more and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so we got our gasket dressing. We wipe down everything to make it clean. This is clean. It should be, it's brand, brand new. And then you basically put it on, it says blue stuff. You just put it on and, uh, and then you let it uh, dry kind of like contact cement let it get tacky I don't want to put too much because I don't want it to get into the uh, passageways of the bowl nut but we'll see what how we can do it I think you're supposed to put it on both sides. I guess we will. And this is the stuff that I put on before and it disappeared. Uh, and I'm not really sure why. It should, shouldn't have evaporated. It says it's fuel resistant. So it wasn't the fuel that ate it. So where did it go? I mean, it was completely clean like it was never there I guess I put some on the bowl nut again but we'll leave it off this time we'll leave it off the bowl nut this time let's see if it's the issue with the bowl and not on the nut side so we'll let that sit for 
uh, let's say a few minutes, 10 minutes or so, and then we'll uh, assemble everything. Well, it's only been about two or three minutes. The instructions just says ample time for the solvent. This is solvent based to evaporate. So I've given it ample time. So we're gonna stick it on here and get it lined up. There you go. We're just trying to eliminate the possibilities of what's, which one's wrong. Well, I guess we put it on the other side of the gasket. Why don't we do that? Now that it's stuck on there, let's just go ahead and put a little bit on this side. It won't hurt that it's exposed. It's been it's made so that you can take parts on and off. And I was doing research and black RTV wouldn't have worked on this. Um, the Permtech site says it's not good for I don't know if it said not specifically for gasoline, but more for oil. Um, but they they recommended this product, which is why I got it from before. I was just surprised that it just didn't last and it disappeared. But they're saying this is the be better of the product rather than using the black RTV. So we'll give this a second to dry. We I won't put it on the bowl nut. And the reason why is because this bowl nut has its passageways on the side right inside and I don't want any of that goopiness to squirt and block this because that's where the fuel enters so we're trying to avoid that so that's why I don't want to put too much on okay so we're going to reapply the bowl gasket put the bowl on Yeah, make sure we line it up properly. Here you go. And then it says torque it to spec and then come and check it again after 10 minutes. So we'll torque it to lightly. I don't know how much. Now the gasket's moving. But I don't want to crank down on this. I might have done too much. Let's just leave it at that. We'll test it. We'll, we can tighten it up. It's just that gasket's so thick. I don't want to squish it too much and then it leak around the sides. So we'll see how that works. So we'll let that sit and we'll come back and test it. All right. So it's been about 30 minutes, more than their 10 minutes, they said. But let's uh, give it just a little bit of a tightening. I think that should be good. All right, let's turn it on and see. Fuel's on. Make sure the needle, if you're leaking out of here, that means the needle's not sit, sitting right. Give you an up close look what's going on here. And we get a little bit of a dripping. See, what I ended up doing was I put a lot more of that gasket around there and uh oh now hold on we're leaking here hold on there you go all right so the needle's sitting back up there so that didn't help it did slow it down i ended up smearing a bunch on the outside of the nut too to fill in any gaps but i did hear back from the permatex tech support and they said I should use the aviation uh, gasket former so I'm gonna get some of that and we'll try that instead of this because I don't think this is really working very well it slowed it down a lot well you know what let's try tighten it up a little bit and maybe that will help let's get some of this fuel off this is from around the top there I just don't want it shouldn't be I just like to experiment just to see what what different things because I kind of want to think about all right what if there was an Amazon or an auto parts store nearby how would you fix it 
All right, that just made it worse, tightening it up. It's dripping real bad now. Now it's leaking really, or unless I did it too tight with the, uh, for the gasket. Or I broke the sealant. So, all right. We'll have to try something. I'm going to loosen it a lot and see what happens and retighten it. Maybe I'm tightening it down too much. Well, that stopped it. Maybe I was tightening it too much. Is that the problem? If you over tighten the gasket, maybe uh, it was squeezing it too much because it just stopped. I mean, this is the whole point of this experiment right here. Normally for this setup, I'd use it for after a rebuild, hook it up to make sure and let it sit to make sure it's not leaking. I mean, you could do this on your own uh, machine, but I'd rather, uh, before I put it on this machine, just quickly throw it up here and test it. Let me get you focus here. Come on, focus. I'd rather put it up here on the stand with the gas and all that and test it before I put it on the machine and then have to take it all off and then you're bending uh, underneath trying to look at it because I don't have a lift for uh, to, to work on these things but for something like this I thought it was good that way we can do experiments try different products but I think we've got it to stop so on this issue I was just cranking down too much on the gasket so now we just need to see how long this will last and we'll try it out so good so I guess the next step is to reinstall it on the machine. So I've let it sit with the fuel on for about six hours and the results are no leaks. So that worked out pretty good. So I was over tightening it. The, uh, if you're curious about the filter, uh, the gasket I was using, it was a cellulose um, and it was probably eighth inch thick. I think it was, it was a pretty good size. So I was cranking down too hard on it because uh, it is kind of soft. Um, but I think that the uh, sealer did help fill in any of the imperfections on there. Now I did uh, email Permatex and they said that their aviation number three would have been a good use also. So maybe we'll get some of that. That might have been a little bit better product. But this is gas ra rated. I can still see it. Um, I don't know where it went last time, so we'll just have to see what it's going to look like long term wise. So, this is my setup of the Carbomatic, and I think it works pretty good. I, I like the setup that you get good viewing of it while standing up, and you can uh, test it. Again, like I said, you can always test it on the machine itself, but this is kind of nice to have so that uh, you don't have to bend over and you can kind of work on it and you can test it indoors and let it sit for a couple hours just to make sure your rebuild works and I always like using the original carbs when I can they, they work seem to work a lot better than some of the aftermarkets so I think we'll cut the video off here I really just wanted to show my uh, carb setup here um, the actual running of the machine will come in the following video I'm glad it works out so I will once that gets set up uh, I will have a link to the actual video of the wood chipper that we're working on uh, in the description below. I have a list of all the parts that I used in the description below. And uh, until next time, I appreciate you coming along and following us on this adventure, Fixing Carbs. Before we go, let's give our test rig a name. So we printed out uh, the name that we're going to give our test rig here. It's called Carbomatic. And then here's a diagram of a carb. What we're going to do is just, we mirror imaged it, printed it on a laser printer. And then we are going to tape it right up here. We're going to wrap our squeegee in a little bit of paper, uh, paper towel here. And we use our little handy dandy acetone. Let's get it wet.
And then we're just going to transfer the image. So the design did come through a little bit, but it was not a perfect transfer. So what we're going to do now is we'll fix it. But that's basically it. We're calling it the Carbomatic. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.